Hello, my name is Jennifer Borbonnet, Nutrition and Wellbeing Care Manager with Partners in Care Care Management. Thank you for joining me today as we discuss motivation and losing weight. I'm going to help you commit to health and wellness from two perspectives. Number one will be the lifestyle perspective, and that is finding those actions that we can do that will give us a desirable outcome. So when it comes to weight loss, I'm going to share with you my top favorite five action goals. And number two, we want to understand motivation and commitment. A lot of times this is part of our barrier as to why we don't achieve what we'd like to over a long period of time. So hopefully we can solve some of those problems and let's go. Number one, lifestyle. Five action goals to help you lose weight and keep it off. I want you to consider this as being a worksheet that you can use to help you achieve any goal. We're going to be focusing on weight loss to lose 10 pounds, and by climbing the mountain of success, it means that we're actually doing certain things that are going to help us achieve the goal. So this will be a really nice worksheet for you to print off, uh, fill out, maybe hang it on your refrigerator or somewhere that you can have it as a constant reminder of what it is you're seeking out to do. My top favorite lifestyle goals to help you lose weight include the following. Number one, to limit and avoid sugar. Number two, eat breakfast with protein every day. Eat when you're physically hungry. Exercise at least 150 minutes per week. And drink a lot of water. You should be drinking at least half of your body weight in ounces. Now I'd like to show you how the worksheet works using my top five favorite lifestyle goals. Let me let, draw to your attention, however, that the goal is to lose 10 pounds. You may feel that you need to lose more weight than 10 pounds. Maybe you need to lose 50, but I chose 10 pounds so that anybody feels that this could be attainable and doable. We want to set ourselves up for success, and if we're focusing on 50 pounds, that may be more challenging. The first goal is to limit or avoid sugar. Consume less than 25 grams of added sugar a day would be a great goal. You may not know this, but in July of 2018, added sugar was added to the food label. So there's natural sugar coming from things like fruit, but when we add sugar to items, it really does wreak havoc on our system in many, many ways. Sugar not only is empty calories and bad for our teeth and so on, but sugar also causes us um, to release more insulin when our blood sugar goes up. And with that extra insulin floating around and the crashes that are associated with too much sugar, um, you know, you might have experienced, you know, highs and lows when you would consume sugar, which actually causes you to want to eat more sugar. But that extra insulin floating around can lead to insulin resistance, fat storage, and increased food cravings. So, and with the addictive properties of sugar and the serotonin and dopamine releases, they can cause an addictive cycle. So by limiting or avoiding added sugar altogether, that would be a wonderful goal to help with food cravings and help with weight loss. Next, we wanna start our day with breakfast and protein. Breakfast, in the word itself, says break fast. When we're sleeping at night, our body is in a fasting mode. We may not get hungry. Um, in fact, when we wake up, we might not get hungry until 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want to encourage you to eat breakfast with a protein within the first hour to two hours of waking up. And that protein is actually going to hold you over longer and help you maintain your blood sugar levels. Then we want to eat when we are physiologically hungry, listening to hunger cues and only eating when we're physical hung physically hungry. In our brain, there is a section called the hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, we have a trigger that alerts us to eat when we are hungry. This is a survival mechanism that's built into us. When we go on diets and we're physiologically hungry, but we say, oh, can't eat, I'm on a diet, you're going against your natural body's ability to tell you when, what, and how much to eat. So I want to encourage you to keep healthy foods on hand. Um, when you feel physiologically hungry, it doesn't mean to go eat a whole entire meal, but eat something that um, is a whole grain, protein source, healthy food selections to listen to the hunger. 
Um, and you know, hey, maybe there's a time when you get hungry and you're not around food, there's no proximity to food, that's completely normal. It's okay to be hungry once in a while. Um, all right, so moving on, the next one is going to make sure that you're getting a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate exercise in a week. And we can do this by cardiovascular training, uh, stretching and strengthening, uh, using weight-bearing exercises to improve lean body mass. When our body has more muscle, we are going to burn more calories just sitting. We burn calories with cardiovascular exercise as well, but it's the lean body mass that is going to be crucial, especially as we get older, we lose lean body mass, so we, we have to work extra hard to maintain it. Um, so women who are going through menopause or over, end of menopause, the body composition changes, so we really want to work hard at getting that lean body mass back, all right, for our overall metabolism. And I know exercise is difficult for some because it takes a lot, you know, it takes time and a lot of effort. Um, it may mean that you have to make an appointment with a personal trainer, grab a workout buddy, or even join a class because then we can add up the minutes and we can say, hey, I did 60 minutes with the trainer, I did 30 minutes with my friend, and 60 minutes at a class. And, um, you know, there you go. You're, you're getting really close and exceeding your goal potentially. Um, and, and you can look at this in a lot of different ways. It's ideal to work out over the course of three days to achieve the 150 minutes. But I understand that maybe that doesn't work out for some. So on the weekend, if it's all you got to do 70 minutes one day and 80 minutes another day, okay, so be it. But another person might say, well, I'm going to exercise five days a week. Um, for 30 minutes each and do it over the long period, you know, uh, you know, a longer span of time. So, um, so yeah, so 150 minutes minimum of exercise is going to be extremely important for weight loss and your metabolism. And then lastly, it's very important to drink a lot of water, at least half of your body weight in ounces or ballpark 64 ounces of water daily. Water is necessary for fat metabolism. Um, it's going to allow a person to burn more calories and improve muscle performance. If you have a hard time with water, don't hesitate putting a little bit of lemon juice in there. Um, and also avoid being thirsty because thirst is a sign of somewhat dehydration. So um, drink your water and um, and that, that is how the worksheet is going to work. Now, you can put in any goals. These are just my top five favorites. Um, but you can use the boxes or, you know, adjust the goal any way you see fit that's going to work for you. Now that you have some solid action goals that you can partake in to achieve your outcome of weight loss, I want to encourage you to make sure to log your activities. So, for instance, this is actually a three-week goal sheet. It's got room for five goals. Um, I want to also say that if you read these five goals that I've presented to you and uh, they seem difficult, uh, then just select one that you would like to do. Um, so let's just say water. You would write in, drink at least 64 ounces of water a day for at least five days a week. And I'm saying even though your goal is to do it every day of the week, put five days a week so that you can exceed at that. Um, and, and set yourself up for success because in the event that you don't do it, um, you know, you don't want to feel like you failed at it. So there's room there for each one of your goals um, or different goals if you have something else in mind that works really well for you. But um, again, you may choose to do all five, but if you wanted to start with one and do that one for 21 days and put another one for another 21 days, they say that if you practice something for 21 days that you're going to be um, better able to manage that as a lifestyle change. So um, however you want to do it, if it's not working, you can always change it. Uh, we're not going to be perfect at this, and it is a little bit of trial and error. But I will tell you, something is better than nothing, and of course more is better than some. So just do your best with this, but um, keeping track is going to be really important. That's the only way that you're going to be able to monitor to say, hey, this is what I was doing, and you know, am I getting uh, the results that I'm looking to do? Because then you can change the goals if you need to. Okay, now we're going to understand our motivation and solidify our commitment. Okay, I have a question for you. Why do you think play 
is the strongest motivator for sustained change. If you guessed it's fun, it brings you joy, then you're correct. Another question I have for you is, why is there less success in the all or nothing attitude? Basically, we're biting off more than we can chew. We're setting ourselves up for failure by trying to do too much. And this causes a lot of frustration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about three things that can often be barriers and mind struggles. Number one is gonna be the procrastination, deadline versus no deadlines. Motivation, both extrinsic and intrinsic, and commitment. First, we're going to talk about procrastination. Most would agree that any type of procrastination is like having a monkey on your back. This is when we are procrastinating those things that we really need to do. The first type of procrastination I wanna to talk to you about is the one with deadlines. These are things like doing the bills, um, projects that have a due date, registrations, anything that has a due date. The second type of procrastination um, to me is one of the worst, and this is the one that has no deadlines. This is the one that has that constant voice in your ear saying, you need to do this, or you should be doing this, or I know you really wanna do this. They're, they're like deep in your soul. Um, a lot of times these are things like starting that new exercise routine, or that entrepreneurial effort, or starting to eat clean. And they can have endless time frames on them where they're actually spinning in your brain, you want to do them, and that you might have wanted to do them for years. So I will tell you this right away, if you want, if you have something like that, that you're trying to accomplish and you really want to do, put it on the calendar, give yourself a start date. Maybe the start date isn't tomorrow, but maybe the start date is next week so that you can prepare the necessary tools that are, that are going to help you actually achieve that. So if it's an exercise routine, you're going to maybe need to buy new shoes or you need to figure out which DVDs or video, um, you know, like YouTube videos that you're going to use, or apps, or if you're gonna work out outside, if you're gonna join a gym, this type of thing. But get it on the calendar so that you can get all your ducks in a row so that when that start date comes, you're ready to go. Motivation is in two forms. We are motivated by either extrinsic or intrinsic motivation. And extrinsic motivation examples include things like a food reward. And this is probably one of the worst things we can reward ourselves with because when we're not feeling very good, we might actually go for the food reward just because we're used to rewarding ourselves with it. It gives us uh, like a good feeling. Uh, money is a reward, an extrinsic motivator, um, because we might work harder to earn more money. We might actually take on more projects and things like that because we want to earn more money. Maybe you want to start a race because you would like to earn a medal or something like that. So is our motivation to maybe enter into that 5K or that half marathon? Paying interest or late fees are also extrinsic motivation. Um, these are negative and positive. So for instance, when we have our credit card statement come in the mail and it's due on a certain date, if we don't pay it, we're gonna to have to pay a late fee. Or if we don't pay it off, there's interest attached. However, some credit cards actually build in rewards to use their card. So this is a very positive thing. But again, there's consequences if we don't do it. So thinking about that, what is it that would motivate you? Would you feel like putting a star on the calendar because you accomplished your goal would be enough? Maybe you have to put $5 in the jar when you do something that was your action goal that you wanted to achieve. And then when you didn't do it, you have to take $5 out. Would you be more motivated to do it if you knew that you had to remove $5? Um, all of those things um, can be helpful. And, you know, intrinsically, which I haven't talked about yet, you know, I really um, want to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to go exercise. But when I, have, when I get to meet my friend, that's even more exciting. So by joining a friend or doing things that are going to make you feel happy, give you joy um, from an extrinsic as well as an intrinsic method, which we're going to talk about the intrinsic in just a moment, but it's going to help you achieve your goal. 
And it's important to have these initiate um, or, you know, be initiated um, with all of your actions. So that way you can feel like you're, um, you know, it, it's kind of like reprogramming the mind. And if we're doing something that you didn't really like doing before, but then when you start doing it, you give yourself a pat on the back or do the victory dance, um, it gives you more excitement. So basically extrinsic is um, doing things for a reward or to avoid some type of consequence. Now, intrinsic motivators are a little bit different. Intrinsic motivators are things like the internal desire to learn a new skill, or you have this internal desire to feel better. It's a driving um, motivation within you to feel better. Um, maybe it's just to gain something like autonomy or creativity or responsibility. Um, my husband actually switched his career because he really wanted more autonomy. I personally like my job because it's very creative. Um, some people want to take on more responsibility, so they, they push, push, push to become maybe in a more of a managerial role. Um, maybe helping people is a motivator for you as to why you do or what you don't do. But seriously, intrinsic motivation is because you're doing things for fun. Now, I want to talk to you about something that's really important as a motivation, um, you know, from a motivation perspective. We have to understand that we are the ringleaders in the arena of our own lives. We are the ones that stand up for our health, our family, our career, and our happiness. And I'll tell you what, um, you know, maybe when you were growing up, you had a mother or, you know, a person telling you, eat your vegetables, go outside and play, get your activity in. Well, see, as adults, we don't have anybody telling us that. We know it's important, um, but we have to make sure that we find that intrinsic motivation within ourselves to say that this is what I need to do and this is why I'm going to do it. Um, you know, happiness um, is one of those things that we have to understand. You know, if you're meeting with a really, really good friend and you're sitting on, you know, an old sofa in like an unfinished basement, you're having just as good of time with that friend as if you were on the beach with a nice cold drink in your hand. And, you know, I know the beach sounds so much better, <laughs> but the bottom line is that happiness is one of those things that um, we have to have control over. And, the, and, and it really is going to come from us. Um, and we want to make sure we stop comparing ourselves to others. Um, you know, if you're looking at a person as a role model, that's great, you know, to kind of help motivate you and guide you. But if it's also, if it's something like, say, on Facebook that's making you more discouraged, like feeling you can't measure up, then those are the things that you want to get out of your life. Um, because, our, because our main goal here and all of our action goals to improve our wellness or improve any area of our life is really so that we're better, better today than we were yesterday. All right. So remember, these intrinsic motivations are going to be the things that we do for fun. OK, now um, we're going to talk about commitment. This is a little saying that I found on the Internet. It says commitment means staying loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the mood you said it has left you. And, you know, really, when it comes to being motivated, we know that that is just a feeling and feelings come and go. Um, talking about, you know, yourself versus a good friend, you may have to rebuild some trust that is lost within yourself. So for example, let's just say you had a dinner commitment with a friend and you received a text message about 30 minutes before you were ready to leave uh, for the date and they sent you a lame excuse like, oh, I really wanted to finish up my TV program or I need to sort my socks. Well, you get the idea. Um, but you most likely wouldn't be canceling on a good friend with these types of excuses. However, we're always you know, letting ourselves down and making up excuses as to why we didn't exercise or why we didn't pack our lunch or, or you know, or why we were emotionally eating. We're, we always have excuses. So I want to encourage you that when you make commitments for yourself, I want you to, um, you know, do things that are going to make you who you wish to be. Um, do things because it's your standard of who you want to be. Because um, if you really cared about the commitment, uh, you would do it when you said you would, all right? 
And this is gonna allow us to slow down our yeses, okay? Because we're gonna really prioritize as to what's important to you. Let me give you an example. You know, we're, we're talking about a physical versus a mental level of training. From a physical perspective, um, let's just say, um, okay, for instance, myself, I, I can jog about three miles and I'm very comfortable jogging three miles. At one point in my life, I did get myself up to about seven miles and I was getting problems with my knees and my shins. And I just kind of thought that's not for me, but I'm very comfortable at three miles. But let's say one day I wake up and I said, you know, what? I'm gonna run 30 miles today. All right, I got good intention, I'm motivated, but I set out to do so and I've already know that I don't do well at seven miles and most likely because I never trained past the three mile mark for a really long time, I'm not gonna get very far, all right? So in order for me to train, say, for 30 miles or a marathon or something like that, I'm gonna have to take baby steps and I'm gonna have to build my commitment, I'm gonna have to build my endurance, I'm gonna have to build um, my mental capacity to even do so. But it's the same idea when we're used to letting ourselves down all the time. So if you if you um, are using your past experiences, you know, to move forward, we're going to kind of have to change those experiences. So I want to encourage you that you know when you set yourself a commitment, stick to it, and that's again you want to you know, want to acknowledge that so that you can then make more commitments and stick to those, and you're going to start building up this level of training, this, this level of mental training that's going to allow you to be successful long-term. Because if you haven't been there, um, it's gonna be really hard to get there, harder. Um, maybe you've said, hey, you know what? I lost weight before, I know I can do this. Um, but you can also be saying, I failed before and I'm gonna have a difficult time doing this. So again, it's going to be you know, reversing the failure and um, bringing out the success and moving forward continually. Just a few final thoughts. Um, number one, I want you to make sure that you are choosing an action goal that will help you achieve the outcome that you desire. Um, and, and a person actually shared with me in one of the past presentations that having a why is extremely important. So let's just say your why is to avoid diabetes because you see other people in your family have diabetes and you know diabetes kind of goes coincides with weight loss and if you lost weight then you would know that you're not going to get diabetes and the complications etc so that is a very strong intrinsic and an extrinsic motivator kind of at the same time so it's going to um you know really be a goal that is going to achieve something greater than just say weight loss okay um be motivated by the fact that you are the captain of your ship nobody else is so you have to make the change you have to do what it is that you seek out to do um, make sure you put a start date on your calendar because if you don't again this is going to be something that's just going to float out there in the universe and never become accomplished and then lastly or not lastly but um this particular one is let your commitment rule over your excuses and your distractions um, never ever stop recommitting and this is really where you're setting a standard of who you are, um, not what you want to become necessarily, but who you are truly to yourself. Be honest with yourself. And then lastly, make sure you keep records of what you're doing. That way you can track as to whether or not the outcome is being achieved. And again, reward your efforts and maybe even build in some consequences if you need to. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jennifer Bourbonnet, and hopefully I gave you some great tips to help you lose weight and stay committed.